find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, strong, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the poor. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for the Indie Mayhem Show episode 82 in the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. We got a very special one coming up for you. Uh, doing some production here in the Pittsburgh area for the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, so much more. And the new IndieWrestling.us just launched this week. Maybe we'll talk about that in the uh, discussion portion of the show. But with me from... Corpus Christi, Texas, where they like to throw things in the water. It's Amen. Yes, that's that's how I'm. That's exactly how I'm going to uh, introduce it from now on. That's, that's the defining. That's the defining. It point is. Of the city. It is. It is. Go for a swim when you're wrestling in Corpus Christi, right? That's why there's not a lot of promotions down there, right? Yes, definitely. That's like, oh, you guys definitely just... yes. My last week, my last week, by the way, here in Corpus Christi, uh, we'll be back in oh, San Antonio next week. Back so in the hot, hot San Antonio. I know it always throws off Sorg every time I move location, so it's I can just tell. Like a warning I can tell. Uh, uh, when you go, when you get back to the dorms, the, your background gets plainer. Uh, so, it does. Yes. Yeah. Look, I mean, you got windows. Nice curtain. It's, you got yeah. a curtain. I mean, that's that's way way too spiffy for college life and dorm life. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but this is your indie mayhem show. You can check out this and other shows. Subscribe to us at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Follow us on the Twitter's at mayhem show. Uh, Find us on Facebook, on, on the Facebook groups. There's a lot of discussion going on there about regular and indie wrestling. And also on uh, Google Plus for Wrestling Mayhem Show. You know what? Don't bother with that. Nobody's on Google Plus these days. Um, <laughs> I've just, just made that determination. Uh, also, Instagram. You know, we're on Instagram. I keep forgetting. Uh, we're trying to do some stuff on there as well. But uh, you, you probably want to be on there here in the next couple of weeks. So uh, this week, uh, we have an in-studio guest, Eamon. We do. So, I, I'm excited. We haven't had one. Uh, when was the last in studio guest? Was it uh, Palace? Uh, God, who pa- was it? Palace, maybe. Appropriate. What is maybe, that? A, that is Palace. appropriate. Yeah, okay, yeah. That is appropriate. With us is uh, she just debuted at uh, IWC's Proving Grounds for also available on IndieWrestling.us. Uh, it's Brittany Baker. How you doing? Hey, I'm great. To join us here on the show uh, for the first time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, uh, so, so this we, we this isn't the first time we've had a newbie on the show. So I'm hoping you come back in exactly a year and we see how you're doing. That's so, a good <laughs> deal. Let's make the date. So, uh, how, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Doing well. Happy to be here. Awesome. So we like to uh, kind of get into um, um, kind of what got you into pro wrestling. Why are you doing it? Because we think like the, the the wrestlers have to be the biggest of fans to get this far into it, right? Uh, so what was kind of your earliest uh, kind of introduction to wrestling that, that really kind of caught your attention? Okay. Um, so I grew up with boys. The family that babysat me was five boys. I have a little brother and like 13 boy cousins. So... Mm-hmm. I've always been kind of a tomboy, in and out of wrestling. That you know, I think we've all gone through stages where we've watched it more, it more and less type mm-hmm. deal. And then um, in college, when I did my undergrad at Penn State, I just really got into it again. And I was moving to Pittsburgh for dental school, which I'm in now. And I found out about all the the, in, the independent wrestling wrestling scene, which I wasn't really too familiar with. And I was like, okay, why not? Like you ask why I I'm, I ask why not? If you're <laughs> a wrestling awesome. fan and you have an opportunity to train and do wrestling, it's mm-hmm. it's like a dream come true. Which which that was funny. You mentioned dental school. Uh, mm-hmm. Apparently, you go to the same dental school as my cousin. Yeah. And so that was kind of a weird like like I, I I can't remember how that came together. Like I don't know if I looked at your Facebook or something and saw the mention. And I'm the just old, like the old I mutual wonder. friend gimmick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um that's awesome so um so how did you come across the school itself then um i google and then i i sort of asked around with Mm -hmm. some people that i knew were from more familiar with the indie wrestling scene Mm -hmm. and then iwc is the place to be apparently so (laughs) 
Awesome, awesome. Uh, so yeah, I know you know uh, you know we get to see the trainees on on our side doing production for a while, and I know we always kind of like kind of do the poll of like I wonder if that one's gonna make it a little bit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this. So the very first show I'm at, mm-hmm. I I meet everybody in in Justin Plummer, who at the time was the the aftershock backstage announcer guy. Yeah, would always ask. So are you gonna quit yet? Are you, like every single show, and I'm like, who is this guy? I don't even know him, but I'm gonna like. Little did you know. I'm going to close live a man in the vest asking me why am I going to quit? I'm like, no, I'm not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then months later, you know, owner of IWC. Mm-hmm. And then there you are, like what fish show in uh, that he does. Uh, you're, 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 you're on on the poster, the main event. <laughs> right, yeah. So Awesome. So how was it? Well, well first, who did you train under? Um, Super Hentai oh, is awesome. my head trainer, awesome guy, mm-hmm. um, awesome role model in general, and then Marshall the Bull <laughs> is my other train. He is a bull, that's mm-hmm. for sure. And then we always have like guest trainers stopping in and out. It's really cool. Um, like DJ Z stops by nice. and helps, which is phenomenal. Like mm-hmm. we could sit in the ring forever and uh, learn it, from him. It was always interesting because uh, I know Bronco and um, I can't remember the other guy. The 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 uh, the slaughterhouse guys like they were always bigger guys but you could tell they wrestled like shima you know right oh yeah like, like you, you like they definitely like he instilled that in them you know right so yeah um, shima's awesome and then like we have all the seminars this is just awesome opportunities to like train and learn from your idols so that's cool awesome awesome yeah i know uh, i think uh tommy dreamer's coming up this week isn't he yep tommy dreamer we did um we had matt hardy vince russo rhino wow. it's always Definitely opportunities galore. How is because I mean I, I mean I think it's obvious with everybody else you're learning what to do in the ring and everything. What does uh, uh, you know somebody like Vince Russo bring on a seminar kind of basis like that? Oh, his was awesome. It was all promo and and um, which I, you know I wish I could re- redo that seminar because it was when I just first started training and it was mm-hmm. all about like developing your character and how to how to portray a character and just stuff like that and it was so early on that i was like um i just i took a bump yesterday for the first time so, so like the character stuff was still way foreign to yeah, us yeah. but um it, i mean all this they every single seminar you take something from it and i we all, i always go down like write everything down so someday i'm gonna have like a notebook of, of quotes and uh, little tidbits of information from all these seminars that i go to Awesome, awesome. That's great. Um, so, like I said, you you, you kind of build up. So, uh, you you've been kind of on the road with the IWC for a few years, and they and they yeah, there's always kind of kind of crazy stuff going on there. Um, you know, kind of what as a trainee, what's kind of the, the crazy stuff that you see kind of before you even get in the ring? Oh my! Oh. <laughs> 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 Well, because you're there every show, and I'm I know there. I know it's, it's it's from the Mevo ones to the Clearfield ones, right? And and you know, like I said, mentioned with the seminars, but there's a lot of people coming in now and everything, and then there has to be something interesting going on there. I, I know being around it myself, like we get to see some interesting stuff on production, <laughs> so I can't imagine what you guys deal with. So I am one of the few females mm-hmm. involved with IWC, so I I don't that and, 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 and you know, and to be so fair <laughs> to Justin, usually the females do not last. To be yeah, fair, well, I, I, that, uh, you're the first I can remember since the one of our friends of the show that that's been on, and that was uh, several several years ago. Because I'm the first Britt Baker. That's that's, why. <laughs> there you go. That's why. There you go. Um, no, oh my gosh. As far as like, just in we uh, well, first off, my trainees, I love them. My mm. fellow trainees, we're always having fun. We have so many inside jokes. I could sit here forever and talk about them, and they wouldn't make any sense or be funny to anybody mm-hmm. here because. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. What are you? What are you looking for exactly? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just putting that out there. Um, but anyways, so you, uh, first, uh, so you had this your first first match. Uh, uh, what, what two weeks ago at this point, right? Right. Um, I. I we were talking about this a little bit before the show, but uh, Dan Hooven's been killing it on Instagram. Oh my as gosh. I say, how many times? Dan Hooven. <laughs> I can't remember between you and Bulk Nasty debuting. I can't remember the last time new fresh out of training school wrestlers had so much backstory and visual like visual representation going into something like this um he was pulling pictures from everywhere and mm-hmm. i had like a picture 
from Hawaii, and he was like, oh, Britt Baker's training with the Usos. Oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> he yeah, went, I mean, okay, he wanted me to ask about the Usos. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's like a picture with, like, two Samoans, mm. and he was, like, Britt Baker getting secret training from the Usos. It's, it was hilarious, but... And, and the worst part is his, like, personal um, Twitter account. He'll always be posting like oh Brent Baker only charged me $20 this time for a picture I'm so happy to see like pushes me as like the ultimate heel and I'm mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. stop tweeting that stuff and, and and I know you uh not only you Bulk Nasty who debuted at the same show like I Bulk remember it nasty. was it was it was like pictures of him lifting weights I'm gonna try to find it here I don't know he put he puts up so many damn pictures I can't find the ones from I like know. two weeks ago uh, but but it's like him lifting weights, like bulk nasty is at the gym preparing for his debut. Yeah, like and it's he like quietly waits this, or something. Yeah, he quietly yeah. waits for to 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 get on the main stage or right. something like that. And I'm just like, what? And it, actually, here's the one. This is the one that kind of got me. The uh, the welcome to Britsburg. Oh yeah, this that... is like I saw that. I was like, you're telling me she's gonna have t-shirts, man? <laughs> Dan <laughs> Hooven started that the Britsburg thing. Like he literally he started that, and then the fans kind of ran. I have yet to ever say anything about Britsburg mm-hmm. on social media, in the ring, anything. You haven't had a chance to promo, right? Like right. You, because uh, those don't know. Like so, you. Well, okay, let's let's scale back for a moment. Before wrestling, you've been in the IWC. You've been on screen for a while now. I think you kind of replaced Justin Plummer. Thankfully, he didn't toss over the vest to you. Uh, I for wouldn't that. wear it. I would refuse. <laughs> I would have to kindly refuse. And I always feel bad because our coloring has been so bad because we we color balance for the front, and he's got so many lights in the back. And then we go back to you talking to somebody, and I swear it looks like a porn set. <laughs> <laughs> right it's fine it's fine i mean you're you're like in a dress and like the colors are like purple and stuff and we're like what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah th- it was oh that was all and that, that kind of came out of nowhere where he was like you're gonna do him and chuck came up to me and they're like you're gonna do interviews now okay good bring a dress i'm like oh okay first time what do i say like what am i doing you know it was mm-hmm. very nerve-wracking but it was fun oh that's all okay so there here's backstory so i'll be like the, all those interviews are live at, mm-hmm. at court time, and I'll be like interviewing, and then of course all the wrestlers are off to the side, like mooning me and do this and that, everything <laughs> unprofessional to try to like throw me off my game. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, 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 how did you deal with it? You've done that since I think Reloaded, right? Um, yeah. So, f- so a few months there, a few shows there at court time, um, doing some of those interviews, and then we we brought you into uh, uh, you had some issues with Dylan Bostic and Ray Lynn, right? Yeah, uh, the chick's crazy. That's, that's the issue. <laughs> that's the issue there. Just trying to trying to get an interview. You know, the, the Platinum World Tour apparently don't they don't do interviews? I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean. No issue, except she's crazy and runs her mouth and wants to wrestle. And I, I would absolutely want to return the favor and wrestle. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And then, of course, now we're back to uh, uh, where we're at now with the with the Instagrams and stuff. Um, so, so, so you had your first match. Um, how do you think it went? You had a mixed tag again. Andrew Palace, Dylan Bostic, Raylan, part of it. Raylan's definitely been around for a little bit. Right. Right. So, um, I, how did it feel get in front of the people there down there at White Oak? Uh, the fans they were awesome. They were cool, and I've, I'm with Andrew Palace. Like, who else? Who better than Andrew Palace? Everybody loves Andrew. He can like do no wrong, mm-hmm. and he's just he's like an awesome, awesome mentor in general. Um, I I could put Andrew Palace over forever. I love that guy. <laughs> love him to do- look at him. He's flawless. He is just <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Uh, but no, it was good, and you know they were everyone. Everyone involved was very cooperative, and aside from Raylan and Dylan being heels and cheating and this and mm-hmm. that, it was all good. Awesome. I'm I'm so excited. One on one, Cage Fury, mm-hmm. me and Raylan, more than excited. Not in get, the cage though, right? Not in the <laughs> well, not in the cage. As of now, not in the cage. Unless she wants to go in the cage, I'll. Ring her blonde hair through there's it. There's not. There's not enough cage matches with ladies. I think. <laughs> yeah, I would do a cage match. Maybe not. Not right now, but down the yeah. road, I would. I mean, was like, one of the main events of Raw back in the day was what Trishan Trishan Lita or, or uh, 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 Victoria and Lita, maybe. Yeah. Oh, how cool would that be to be like a like a Sasha Banks Becky Lynch 
cage match. I just thought of that. That'd be cool. <laughs> well, that's interesting. so. So you're you're. I, I think you're you're kind of coming up in, in an interesting time as we're seeing. You know, obviously the divas division has been a little more diva y than wrestlery right. uh, in the past several years, and now we're kind of having this resurgence in NXT. Is that kind of uh, helping, kind of motivate you a little bit to it, see? Oh, wait, the, we have this to look forward to, maybe. Right, and it's um uh, like. Everyone always says, oh, who's your favorite wrestler? Who's your favorite match? And it's always been, like, Trish and Lita, Trish and Lita, like, mm-hmm. from so long ago. And now it's, like, I feel like ever since the um, the takeover, it was Charlotte and Natalia. Ever since that, it's just taken off. It, and now if you want to see good wrestling, just, like, put on NXT or, or I guess now Raw because a lot right. of those girls are on the Raw stage. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's NXT is filled with talent. So... Because it seemed like like the indie wrestling, like we've talked a lot about kind of the representation of indie wrestling of, of women's wrestling. It seems like it'd be non-existent in certain places. IWC for several years, it felt like too. Um, some other promotions doing some things. Uh, you know, uh, it seems like we've we've had like this kind of flux of great wrestling happen here. You know, again with people like Sarah Del Rey, you know, IWC alumni herself uh, now training up there. Um, Trainer, it, it, yeah, tra- yeah, exactly. And you, and I think there was actually an interview. With Charlotte, maybe no Paige, Paige on the on the uh, Stone Cold podcast. Actually, yeah, calling, I watched that. Calling her out by name, you know. Yeah. So, um, it, it's nice to know that the good wrestling doesn't have to stop for the girls before they get signed, right? Right. So, right, and it's it's just it's so nice to be able to turn on Raw and know you're gonna see like a match and not just hair pulling and strutting around from the Divas <laughs> division. No, I mean not that we're hating on that, but. We like to see wrestling too, right? Right. Awesome. So I understand you're involved also with the uh, Chair Shot Reality with Justin Labar. Yes. How'd that come about? Um. So <laughs> Justin Labar, just one time we were talking wrestling, and I think I'm sure we were arguing about something because that's what we do. And he was just like, you know, I would love to have you come on the show, and I did, and it was fun, and it worked, and then I just kept coming on the show. Um, plus, it's nice that it, they're a bunch of dudes, a bunch of nerdy dudes, too. So it's to have a female on the show always helps. And um, I kind of took a little break from it in the summer just because they, they switched the filming hours to when I was in, in classes for dental school. But mm-hmm. I will definitely be back on the show arguing with Justin Labar <laughs> on the reg. <laughs> <laughs> good good uh tell me has uh has ghoulish ever donned the, the sting makeup while on the show with you not because that happened to us we were filming at latitude 40 the one summer with them and uh he just like just busted it out when there was those rumors of sting coming back no i have yet to see that <laughs> but i i'm gonna mention that to him that i feel i'm missing out i feel robbed of the sting makeup experience <laughs> it was superb he, he like he, he the, the man has had some practice right with the sting makeup but um out there wooing and everything thankfully i don't think that was a show that Mark he's Madden hilarious was on. yeah in, he's great he's awesome. <laughs> great awesome so uh we got a couple uh questions here we like to ask uh going out here first of all what are you watching these days obviously nxt uh, you, as we talked about you got to be into but um is there anything else cast- catching your attention these days wrestling wise yeah um yeah I, I watch nxt i actually don't get to catch raw as much as i would like to because we train monday nights I, I'm always just Googling random matches, like, um, indie, like, old school. I mean, I, I think I watch Alita match at least, like, once a week, just because <laughs> it, I love that. Um, I would say primarily now, I watch NXT more than anything, because mm-hmm. that's, I mean, everyone's goal, that's where you want to be, so why not wa- make sense to watch people that are, at, have reached your goal, so. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, so far, like again, not so far into your career so much, but you can ask, add chair shot reality to this too. This question: uh, What's the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling or chair shot reality? We can do that. If you got any dirt on Labar, please go ahead and share. Oh, I have so much dirt on Labar. <laughs> I will bury him. All right, all right, that's, all right. That's him. We haven't had him on for a while, so. Uh... Uh, the worst thing: those ring crews can get really late it's fun and we have a great group Mm -hmm. of guys i mean literally all guys and me and we we do have fun and we joke around but particularly with the cage those get to be late nights um especially especially the cage in clearfield 
for an eight minute match. Justin Plummer. No, I'm, just <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to calm out. We've been mad about that. We've we've had there's some built built up tension. But um mm-hmm. uh the, and one of the best things is you miss you make like lifelong friends because um for me personally I'm in dental school where we're we don't talk about NXT Monday Night Raw generally. It's the same thing with my friends. My I've gotten my roommates in it a little bit more, so which is cool because they're totally oblivious to wrestling and mm-hmm. then they started watching Total Divas and now they actually and, and they know you're a wrestler? Yeah, yeah. So, my my I, roommate was at the show actually proving ground and now nice. she's coming to Cage Fury and like bringing her mom. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, she's awesome. I'll have to talk to my cousin to come down too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, talk to her. My uh, that side of the family not great wrestling fans. Oh my so. oh don't you don't have to tell me. My family <laughs> hates wrestling, all of them, so I could tell my grandma's just very judgmental anytime I was staying with her and be like, what are you watching? Actually, I think everybody that like doesn't watch wrestling or they're judgmental. Mm. They look at you like, what? What is Like, what Kool-Aid are you drinking? What is wrong with you? <laughs> 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 it's true, though. If you, mm. if you meet someone, you're like, oh, I, I'm professional wrestling. They're like, what? Why? And then, and then it's fake. Oh, it does it this I always get that. the, you know, like on the TV? You know. It's like, yeah, like WWE. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like that. <laughs> it's funny. Like John Cena. <laughs> that's like that's a common one. So so what are they like they, like are they different companies? Are they like like the minor leagues? Like like, yeah. like and you can't really explain it in, it's in the so context. It's so hard to explain. It's mm-hmm. just like you just just roll with it. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I kind of <laughs> like that. Except no TV and about 300 people maybe and yeah. So, uh, I understand uh, we were talking about you so I think you can announce you you're you're actually going to be a few different places, not just IWC at Cape yeah, in a couple Yeah, traveling weeks. a little bit. Nice. Um, so we're, I'll be at AIW mm-hmm. um, in, Oct- I think it's October 3rd for the, the Girls' Night Out show, which I'm really excited about. Kind of nervous because I've, I've, I've seen a lot of the AIW girls' matches and they're very, very talented females. So that'll be, that'll be an awesome experience. Um, I do some in-ring announcing up at PWR. Okay. In Erie. That's a good crew. A lot of, a lot of IWC people. That's right. John, Ch- not John McChesney's pretty big up there right now. John McChesney so. is huge up there. Mm-hmm. That eerie is John McChesney. I'm convinced. <laughs> like he is the mayor or something. I hear rumor he may be responsible for the turnout at uh, at a uh, 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 global, global force. force. Yeah. So I could believe that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they love him. He's mm-hmm. huge up there. So awesome. I'm a McChesney fan. <laughs> I really like John. Oh, he's always offering advice. Awesome, and uh, and of course, Cage Fury coming up here on August twenty second here in uh, Elizabeth, PA, just south of the town. Of course, it'll be on uh, DVD digital download if you're not in the area. But I recommend if you are, come check it out. It's going to be a crazy, crazy show. It is going to be a crazy show. You have to come, everybody. <laughs> so who's going to do backstage now? <laughs> I don't know. I I have no idea. This is you. Be careful because this is where you find out you're doing double duty. I am not going anywhere near that mic because the last time I did, a crazy broad slapped me. So I told Plummer I'm retiring from that position. Uh, I mean, you remember, like, okay, Plummer, he's on, he's on top now. But remember, he was uh, doing ring announcing and running back to me by the camera to do commentary with, I think, sassy stuff or something at the time. And, like, like you know, this is what happens in indie wrestling. You never know, right. you know? You might have to do an interview right after your match. I hope you win it. Uh, <laughs> I will, for sure. For sure. So. As long as there's no cheating involved, you know. You never awesome. know with those two. Awesome. Brittany Baker, check her out. You're on Twitter. So where, where, you're on Twitter. So where else? Twitter, Instagram, oh. Facebook. Not as active on social media as I should be. And I am going to be better, Justin Plummer. I promise. A tweet a day. He told me that's a what I do. Tweet a day. My new goal is to tweet a, is to do the tweet a day. Real bit, Britt Baker on the Twitter. A uh, bug her. Ask her questions. Right. Yeah, definitely. Hit me with the question. Everyone always asks about training, like what this and that, and like tra- I love tra- training. Is my favorite part mm. of the week because I have school. All week, and then I go to training Monday night, train with those goons, and um, Palace comes and trains with us, mm-hmm. I, I, and Darren DeNero, one of my good, they're both my good friends, Bulk Nasty, we always have a good time, which I, I just listed those names, as you can tell, there's a huge size 
disadvantage on my part with those guys. <laughs> well, actually, I didn't mention, but, uh, you know, speaking of training and physicality, um, it is really in a, in a, uh, intimidating looking at your Twitter account because um, ah, I'm familiar with yoga. I've done the DDP yoga, bro, and right. I cannot do that. <laughs> I've tried it, though. No. I actually just taught Palace how to do this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think I could teach you. You think so? Yeah. Oh, I'm well, on... ne by, by next show. I'm Rusty. By next show. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll have to work on that then. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be, man, I'm going to be fit. I'm going to be doing all kinds of... Well, and then that can be your but... cover photo. <laughs> you don't want that that's gonna be that's gonna be ugly if i try to do that and try to put a pic like that up in shorts that's nobody's gonna want that everybody's gonna unfollow me uh but uh go check her out thanks a lot for joining us uh and uh check her out at iwc iwcwrestling.com for more information and please follow that instagram who knows what hooven's gonna put up next um he has a lot of pictures in his disposal <laughs> and a lot of time on his hands apparently so um so we're going to take a look at uh last week in uh sorgatron media and be right back it makes it that it makes it much harder to strategize which cards you use uh, another big change to angry birds 2 is now you have five lives and a timer until you get more lives unless you pay my my dad talked to roddy and he's like he he said that it was a uh, really great getting to see like someone who my dad grew up watching a little bit of and how my dad was able to connect to me through pro wrestling and Roddy was like oh yeah man that he, he was like that's really awesome it's really great that we can bring like families together and he talked about his son who he was bringing up through wrestling and everything Thanks, everyone, for watching uh, everything that happened this week in Sorgatron Media. Uh, Sorg, yeah, it's time to talk about some of the stuff happening in the world of independent wrestling. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, first off, something a bit more specific, because of course we are, to, to us at least. Uh, and that was Inspire Pro Wrestling that happened this past weekend, our, uh, our Fade to Black event. Uh, uh, a very good event, a uh, very interesting event as well for a couple different reasons. Uh, uh, it's not... I wouldn't say things went awry in a sense, but there was some there was some stuff that we did have to face. Uh, uh, we, uh, for those that were in attendance, we we had some sound issues in the early going. Oh no! To, uh, uh, to what we found was some faulty cable work. Uh, it was luckily quickly uh, fixed. Uh, but you ever, I, I don't know if you've ever been through something like that, Sorg, but it's mm -hmm. like the worst feeling in the world when something like that you happens. You know what? Was your show delayed an hour and they had an impromptu battle royal while Pedro announced the entrances uh, yelling oh, no, we with went no through microphone? With it, but some people didn't get entrance music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're, that's like the. Um, uh, they showed up and nobody was setting it up. And I asked, should somebody set that thing up? And it was like, oh, these people are supposed to be involved. Like, shouldn't they be setting that up? And I was like, I, you know what? I'm going to go look at this. Hey, you're missing speaker wire. Hey, go get speaker yeah. wire. Hey, we need to strip the speaker wire. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it was an <laughs> hour late. It was ridiculous. Luckily, it wasn't that severe of a case. It was uh, some, I, I'm not sure of exactly what it was, but it was some faulty wiring that okay. was luckily fixed um uh pretty quickly but yeah uh, so that situation sucks it also sucked that uh, uh obviously it's very hot down here in texas uh, especially what? during the summer especially around now where it's in like the the three digit marks mm. uh when it comes to stuff like that i don't think we've uh, had three digits a yet this... first in the building oh no yeah that caused uh, the ac to go out luckily no, i we heard no fan complaints but i know mm. we i i you could feel the heat you could feel it um, mm -hmm. but I mean, nobody was really that upset about that, luckily, but, uh, uh, yeah, it was still really fun. We, we packed the place. There were a lot of really fantastic matches on the show. Uh, I definitely encourage people to check out the, uh, the Keith Lee, Angela Lane match, uh, which, uh, if you're not a fan of intergender wrestling, you probably won't love it. Uh, <laughs> but I think it is pulled off well. I think it, it, it it's, it's, I think how an intergender match should be done. Uh, it was a really well told story. I felt, and mm -hmm. and the big news that came from that was uh, uh, Delilah Doom, uh, who we've had on the show, uh, uh, finally having enough of Angela Slane uh, uh, and and her abuse, uh, attacking her, and then uh, challenging her to a street fight uh, at our next event on September thirteenth, which should be interesting because Angela Slane, uh, many would say, is clinically insane. So 
that should be a, a, a very violent contest. And, and, and but, I'm but, interested to but see But such a wonderful Instagram account, I have to say, for an insane person. Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, obviously, big fans of Angelus Lane here, a uh, friend of the show as well. But yeah, uh, uh, that, was also, that also happened. We also have a new Inspire Pro champion in Absolute Ricky Starks who beat uh, uh, Dirty Andy Dalton in record time. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, really quickly. Uh, with, you know, uh, but hey, I mean, I guess it says never doubt Ricky, uh, never doubt Ricky Starks. Uh, so there was, like I said, there was a lot of great stuff to come from uh, that show. Uh, it, it, it's cool to see, you know, when when stuff does happen and, and kind of, you know, goes off the walls or something like that. That you know, we when those moments when you're able to work together and manage and, and get something out, you know. Uh, I, I was really happy with the show um, and, and, and very excited going forward, especially because on September 13th, as I mentioned, we are having Battle Wars 2, uh, which is our Chikara Pro uh, 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 co-promoted show uh, that will be happening again, which I'm so very excited about and I cannot wait for because that was probably my favorite weekend I've ever had as a pro wrestling, uh, uh, as a person in pro wrestling uh, last year. Uh, it'll be, it's definitely going to be very fun. Uh, we've already confirmed that fire ant, uh, Dasher Hatfield and Mr. Touchdown, Chuck Taylor, who will be, uh, uh, making a stop here, uh, as part of his, uh, retirement tour, apparently, uh, Chicago pro grand champion, hollow wicked and Bryce Remsburg are all confirmed. Nice. Uh, which uh, I am very, very excited for. I love, so the, uh, the referee is confirmed. That's, that's pretty that's the Well, it's Bryce Remsburg. I, I know, mean, I know. It's like, the, well, it's the only referee worth confirming. I, I no slight to our friends. Okay. Secondary Jimmy Corderas. Um, Jimmy Corderas is pretty Let me know if Jim Clem, Clemens is coming. That's, that'd be cool too. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> But no, definitely, and and yeah, I'm so excited for that show because I I think it has the makings to be something really really cool. And then we also announced uh, uh, a big event that we're having on November first, uh, which is our uh, tournament, a one night tournament to crown our first ever tag team champions uh, that we're calling Tagcade, and that's with two G's, uh, like like the uh, uh, well known uh, uh, wrestling event Starcade that had two R's for some reason. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm very excited about that. That that should be really fun. I've I've never called a tournament before, so that will be something I can kind of check off my list. And yeah, it'll be fun. I'm 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 really excited to see what comes. There's cool stuff coming from Inspire Pro. We're finally getting caught up on some of our DVD stuff. The backlog that that we had is is finally starting to get released uh, over at SmartMark Video and SMVOD.com. Uh, it's a good time to get to get on the uh, Inspire Pro bandwagon. Uh, so definitely go check us out and, and go support us. Awesome. Awesome. Check that out. Great. So uh, in my world, something changed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we launched our new site today uh, officially. We kind of soft launched it last night a little bit. But uh, IndieWrestling.us, uh, I was, you'll be sick of me talking about as we promote that instead of the old site. Uh, it, it's it's for real. It's its own site. Um, so this was a little bit, just kind of explain what's going on here and kind of our slot in Indie Wrestling and what's happening. Uh, so, so as you guys know, I do Sogertron Media, right? And wrestling is not the only thing I do. Strange, isn't it? Uh, but... <laughs> I, probably a mystery to some people that I do other things, right? Uh, but I wanted to separate that, and I thought I had a little bit of brand confusion uh, kind of going on. And I, I wanted something that was its own thing. The wrestling has kind of gotten big enough, right? Between all the people that we're doing, you know, um, all, the, all the promotions we're working with. And, uh, and and I wanted to get bigger than the PittsburghWrestling.com because, I mean, we are covering, you know, like, all the documentaries, we're all we're covering all the um, um, you know uh, uh, Cleveland wrestling with the best does for Prime Wrestling. Uh, we actually have somebody we'd been talking about in Ohio about posting stuff. We do DBI. It's in Ohio. So so I figured this would make sense. And uh, I was always really peeved because like the IndieWrestling.com, IndieWrestling.net aren't great indie wrestling sites, right? Mm -hmm. They're either a link bait or they're old sites that look like they were designed in the nineties or, or something like that. Uh, and initially I bought this dot domain, what a year ago, maybe, uh, with the intention of maybe doing a community. And it kind of came up and then it was like, well, let's do a store. Let's do our own 
thing, right? Um, but it's not just going to be this. I'm hoping to do some more stuff and integrate it with uh, things going on, uh, be it this show, because we talk to a lot of people are represented on the site. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to integrate there as we kind of move on to the next phase of this. Now we're getting it up, making store, sure the store works, making sure all the titles are in there and everything. Uh, so I want things to be kind of well represented there. Um, and I don't know if you guys have noticed there's been more reviews going around for IWC, for uh, RWA, for, for stuff like that. So we're trying to reach out there as well and kind of get the word out. Um, I'm hoping this kind of becomes uh, an additional marking arm to help out our friends out there. You know, I mean, you guys do a great job down with Inspired, freaking killing it down there. Uh, I've talked about, you know, Dan kind of killing it on IWC. And, uh, you know, just something to, you know, a, a new banner to kind of put things under that kind of makes sense for everything. So... And that's, again, and I'll talk about further on probably basics ergonomics this week. And that's also so I can do more things. I can redesign SorgatronMedia.com because it needs it, right? But, I did, but, if, but if I did that, it would have broken the store. Things were confusing. We're still kind of working on some of the confusion because we kind of have two systems with the DVDs and the digital downloads. And uh, we might be working on some things to combine those. But, but it needs to also... When somebody is buying your independent wrestling, if you're sitting out there wondering, why doesn't somebody buy my shows if you're a promoter or whatnot? If you're an indie wrestler out there and don't know why somebody buy, doesn't buy your stuff, um, there has to be a little bit of... they got to really like your stuff to jump into it. You're not Amazon.com. You're not Walmart.com. You're not WWE. And... I think you need to do more to say, look, this is a legit thing. We're, this is not a fly-by-night thing, right? And I'm hoping that's what we're doing. I think we have a long way to go. But uh, I just want that experience to be as good as, and again, I think we're a long way from it, but I want that to be as good as if you go to a Smart Mark video, which I love, and they and they have our stuff too, and, 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 and then it's a great place, and that's where I look to, or a high spots or something like that, right? Um, and to build something like that for these guys, um that that don't have that access right because i mean it takes a bit to get on smart mark right you guys know it took you guys a while to get on there right you know you have to get a certain point yeah. where they want you to be on there right um even at high spots only gets our best ofs, for instance uh like our best of aj styles best of cm punk stuff like that uh so so it's kind of hard to kind of put that over a bit and we're also going to be playing with some new thoughts on promoting them on social media too, uh, so uh, we're we have the first of it on right now. We're hoping to do a bit more, um, but uh, uh, we're we're going to be putting uh, clips of matches on on Instagram and everything, playing with that. Um, we got some people working on that for us. So, and it's also not just me, which is kind of nice too. We got a little bit of a team <laughs> behind this too. Um, so uh, hopefully it doesn't get put on the wayside with other work going on, which you know. Who who is uh, indie wrestling their first job unless you're the Young Bucks, right? Or Cole Cabana. Um, yeah. So hopefully uh, that works out. So uh, just a little bit of background, what's going on there. Um, also, I had Eamon, as we talked about, so I don't, I don't think I talked too much about Proving Grounds 4 last week, did I? Um, so I, I sat there and, and I'm, I'm, I'm live switching everything and Proving Grounds is going on and we're on pretty much the main event for the night. And... Uh, and I realized, I realized uh, there was a guy right in front of me in the back row uh, filming the match on his phone, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we technically have a thing. We announce, hey, no, no filming without the permission, IWC, Sorgatron Media, et cetera, et cetera, right? And, of course, people are going to ignore it. I mean, some people just don't care, right? And, and, and I've, I've, I, I've observed how WWE is handling things lately. Uh, we've talked about on the show, like the idea that they went and did Instagram and YouTube videoed like the rock coming back from the live show and shot yeah. and they're Snapchatting and Periscoping um, um, the, the NXT announcements and, and, and really kind of supporting this idea of using these platforms at these shows. Yet you go to WWE's live event and they say no recording. You will be, you know, removed from the venue or whatever sure. it is. Um I think I think I'm lighting up. I mean, I, I I kind of 
it's one thing if you're standing it right in front of me and you're uh, sitting there uh, standing in the corner with a good shot filming the majority of our main event with Matt Hardy, which happened the one time and I had them stop. I think that's a little bit over the line, right? Uh, but if you're like dude in the chair and I'm watching it and I'm like, this guy's not getting good footage. This is when like Jimmy Nuss is getting thrown over on the opposite side of the ring and I'm wondering what the hell, hell the guy's recording. And even like some of the other things, like there's some guys out there doing Instagrams of some spots, some YouTubes of some spots I've seen from IWC, from RWA. And the more I see them, and and also observing a little bit of uh, going to the Gathering of the Juggalos and watching, like everybody's got a phone in the air. You know, if you go to yeah. a concert, you have a phone on every side of you that somebody's got up in the air. And they're also bobbing their head and my, <laughs> their arm along with it. And <laughs> it so really it's, great, it's just but... one of those like, why are we doing this? You know what I mean? But it is a, just a fact that everybody wants to, they have a camera in their hand, they want to use it. And the more I think about it, obviously, if I think somebody wants a full on match, a good quality match, you know, uh, they look to your smart mark video and follow up, especially if they're a big fan, you know, um, I, I kind of go to the piracy thing. You know, if you're going to come across, I know, I know a few years ago, one of the super indies was, was making it out there on uh, pretty significantly on one of the message boards, right. And one, one yeah. of the digital downloads or a rip of the DVD, whatever the case may be, it's going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. No indie has a money to, to follow up on those. Uh, as I learned recently when trying to do a takedown on YouTube, Right. Um, but uh, but I, I think you you change that attitude a little bit and use that to your advantage. Anytime I see a video like that. Hopefully it's not the wrestler putting up for one thing, because that's just kind of asinine. Uh, but uh, if it's a full match kind of video, because I mean, wrestlers still film their matches, even if they're do doing DVDs and everything. Even if the company is very open to letting you have the DVD, you know, uh, so you can see your match. Uh, I, I think, you know, you have a spot like that. It's going to be on a cell phone. Nobody knows how to use their cell phones like like a video professional or anything like that. It's going to be what it is. And I think it's if you're a promotion, you use that to your advantage. It's like, hey, man, that was really cool. Thanks. Anybody wants to throw a real DVD where this looks good? Go over to IndieWrestling.us. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I think you you use that. Like, thanks for the advertising. And you jump on top of that, right? Um, yeah, I think it, it. I think it depends on, like you said, using it for advertising. Yeah, I think it, that that aspect really depends on the audience that you're going towards. Um, for example, I know you know there's a lot of. I, I'll go. I'll you know, you know the next day of Inspire Pro Wrestling Show, I'll see videos and and of stuff and and you know all over like you know Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. Um, but I think. Especially in a city like Austin, where a lot of the a lot of our people, it, we when we sell our live events, it's very much like, hey, this is an event. Like this is like something that appeals to like people who aren't even wrestling fans, just like local people in Austin who want to go to like cool events. Mm -hmm. um, and and using that is is cool. Uh, I for, I should have brought it up during when we were talking about the show. Really cool thing that actually happened to us uh, at the show Sunday. Uh, it was apparently that we were the uh, fate to black, which was our hashtag for the show, was the number two trending uh, topic in Austin. Nice, which is really cool. And for when it comes to like fan cam stuff and and stuff that's footage like that, short clips and like stuff like that that gets shared around on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, we view it as a case of hopefully that will someone in Austin will see that and want to come to an inspired pro wrestling show. Right. The full DVDs and, and, and shows and stuff like that, that we film, I think are more intended for an audience that can't always make it to our live shows. Right. Right. Um, but it's all in the way you view it. And it's all in depending on what you want to get out of your video production as a company. Mm -hmm. And it's to the point where we're like, okay, let's build our own version of this kind of thing. That's Dude. one of the things we're doing with Andy Wrestling US. We actually got Chachi is on board, and he's sitting there and he's taking all our last few shows here. Our first one's up with VOW. We're gonna work on that font a little bit, but we're just kind of doing clips of hey, here's some stuff from the matches, right? Whether it be yeah. like some crazy spot, something like that. I mean, look what happened with the IW. They were really good at this, right? They're taking something like that. Uh, you know, remember the what's her name? Uh, uh, Candice LeRae. Candice LeRae taking the knee spot from Cedric Alexander that we witnessed live when we when uh, our group up here went to AIW for Absolution. 
Um, yeah. And I know that was something that popped up. You got to see it. That thing's got crazy hits. And even you dropped up the question. Like, I really want to see what you guys thought of this because we've been talking about the intergender thing, and especially with, you know, two newbies coming with us, more or less, you know, seeing what that, that thought is. Um, yeah. This works. This works really well. Even if they're not buying the DVDs, they know who you are. You know, AIW has been getting my attention for years. Mm-hmm. to the point where they finally got money out of me for going up to their show. You know what I mean? I mean, sometimes exactly. it's a long tail thing. You know, uh, somebody, you know, how much free podcast to go-go stuff did we watch before I went to King of Trios? You and I went up to Cleveland for, mm-hmm. for their show up there with AIW, right? Um, uh, you could say that you're still kind of, well, I mean, you're to the point where you're putting them over. You know, on your shows on Inspire, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's not a fan thing, but still, it's a long tail thing. You have that experience with them because all the free stuff they put online for how many years, right? Mm-hmm. If a fan is going to their live shows now because they started coming to their town or buying their DVDs or on demand now because they've been watching the podcast or hearing about the podcast and hearing the buzz for how many years, that's paid off. There's a long tail to it, you know, and and people need to have the 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 people need to have the uh, patience for that, right? Right. So I hold up and I subliminally uh, wave the card around for the Pennsylvania Gaming Coin Up Hall of Fame. Hi. <laughs> I just realized I, I just found it on my desk. So, um, so so I don't know. That's my thoughts on that. Um, again, I think I think some guys are really doing it good, and I, I hope we get. A uh, bit of traction out of stuff we're doing here, and uh, it'll grow. You know, it's not perfect to begin with. You know, we're getting some people kind of up to speed and and in a flow and and working on the quality. But um, I'm having success with these kinds of things with some of my clients that are not wrestling, and we're adapting that kind of stuff too. Uh, but it is uh, when it comes to social media, when it comes to the online, you have to have something valuable that's free. That people can get into. I'm trying to wrap my head around this for a video show. There's, let that out there a little bit uh, around yeah. wrestling, not just what we do here. When we, we this is our passion. We're we're doing this to do it. You know what I mean? If it helps plug and maybe you buy a DVD from Inspire or RWA or whatever, cool, awesome. Um, if you go buy a ticket to go see Britt Baker or 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 uh, who else have we had on or Andrew Palace or 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 Zach Gowan when he comes to your town or something, awesome, right? Um, but, you know, if you're something putting something over like a wrestling promotion, you got to you got to show them what the experience is. Right. You got to get fans that can't always get their butts in the seats, especially if you want that other component to it. So and I think that's that's something that takes perseverance, patience and a little bit of smarts. So that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> now that I rolled all the things together. Uh, so uh, I don't know anything else on your mind, sir. That's all I got. I think we had a great interview tonight. It's been a great night of Fantastic podcasting interview. as usual. I hope you were enjoying the conversations over the wrestling mayhem show. I know you were hanging out a little bit in the chat room. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, really fun discussions over there. <laughs> you like the part where we kind of forgot what to do next on the show? Like that. Oh, yeah. What was that? That was weird. It's like we forgot how to yeah, podcast. That's what the mayhem's about. There's a reason there's, there's mayhem. The uh, like, that used to happen a lot before we like got organized. And basically, I forgot the fill-in part of the show. <laughs> oh, I remember when only a, like a fourth of what you guys talked about was actually wrestling. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that kind of went that way a little bit. But anyways. Hey, Eamon. He's at me, Eamon, to please. He is the voice of Inspire Professional Wrestling. Yes. And you yes, can indeed. Just- you can hear that voice, uh, courtesy of Smart Mark, Smart Mark videos. Do you ever think that that's a, a phrase that you would hear? It's the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest thing to say. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of the coolest. Uh, but yeah, definitely check us out on Smart Mark Video and SMVOD.com. And check us out on SpireProWrestling.com. Uh, and if you're near Austin, get a ticket for Battle Wars. Uh, you can't get a front row ticket. Those are already sold out. But uh, general admission, plenty is still available. So, yeah. All righty. And go check out everything else. Inspire, or I'm sorry, hit the wrestling.us. Now plug Inspire everything. again. <laughs> now, you know, and Inspire Pro Wrestling. Have I mentioned that? <laughs> I hear they're a good thing going on down there in Texas. Um, anyway, are you working on that thing that I sent you? Is that going to come soon? 
Hopefully. <laughs> okay, okay. I got a thing that AIM is working on for us. Uh, and I'm hoping to reciprocate a little bit on that, too. Uh, so, so should we share it? I mean, it's kind of a thing we're doing. I, I, I you know, we, we have our shows, and we don't really get a chance. I, I can't tell you when I've looked at, I don't think I've ever looked at a full Inspire show, even when you had them free. I've just never sat down and watched yeah. the entire show. So... We want to experience each other's thing. I mean, you've been up here for, I think, an IWC show, haven't you? Or no, yeah. or the Cleveland one. Oh, no, I've never been up to a show. No, um, no. But I, I've gotten to, I've, I've purchased a few uh, Inspire, uh, Inspire, uh, IWC shows on, on DVD in the past. Uh, so so if, if this works out, I, I, I tossed you a couple of them from up here. I want to get his review, his Texas perspective on the IWC RWA shows. And I'm hoping to do the same with Inspire, if that's all right. Um, and, and we're going to kind of review, cross-review each other's things and uh, kind of give our perspective of what we think uh, the, others, you know, the other promotions are doing that we, we don't get to experience in our area. Uh, that should be a part of IndieWrestling.us as well or part of Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's entirely where I'm going to park that just yet prior, prior wrestling mayhem show uh but it'll be linked in everything off of off of everything as well so uh so awesome uh thanks to uh britney baker at at real brit baker sorry i misspelled it on the title i didn't notice until towards the end there at <laughs> real brit baker on the twitters and uh and, and i think she's using her twitter better after our little tech support in between the interview here on the break uh so uh, uh wrestling to subscribe to everything and uh thanks to basic sickness for the intro outro music uh check out mayhem show on the twitters and wrestling mayhem show on the facebook and the facebook groups death to google plus uh and we'll see you guys <laughs> next time support indie wrestling never said i was a gangster or thug but i'm an animal for the taste of the fly Sick, 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 you know how I act now When you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com Hi everyone, do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sortofchonmedia.com.